What's up, guys? I'm just here with Tom, one of our foundation members here at VT Training and Ride. Uh, Tom's actually also a strength and conditioning coach at New South Wales Institute of Sport. Um, Tom, what made you join up at Valley Today Training and Ride? I was actually by chance that I met Troy down at the barber shop. I was going to get a haircut. Um, and he was talking about um, Wim Hof training, which is something that I picked up a couple of years ago and I still use. Um, and to be honest, I was sort of, I had a pretty nasty injury last year and I just wanted to get back into some team environment training. Um, it's interesting coming here, people think, you know, you work at the Institute, why aren't you just training there? And, yeah. uh, you know, I'm training on my own and doing things by myself there and I want to come to an environment where you know, you're with other people who are motivating you, pushing you, and, uh, you know, yeah. you're sharing the experience with everyone. Nice, mate. Lovely. All right, Tom, so I know you said you like to train in a team environment. What is it about the training sessions we do here that's kept you on board with us? Well, I think Valley Chudo ties in with the philosophy that I believe in as well, that it's not just about training, that it's more of a holistic approach. Uh, you know, I know the four pillars here that operate under the Unleash program as well. Uh, so I think one of the most important ones, I believe, is mindset. Uh, I think, you know, you can come in and do all the training you want and eat all the right things, but if your mind and your values aren't really tied into what you're doing, then you'll find that you might fall away from, from your goals. So, uh, you know, I, I'm really attracted to that approach of training, uh, not one of those flash-in-the-pan type scenarios where you just come in, do the work, and you leave. It's a real team environment. It ties in with all you know, the nutrition goals, the mindset goals, the training and the recovery goals. So that's, it's a really attractive area to, to come and train in. Nice, mate. Excellent. So we do a lot of hybrid training here. So we've got a big element of strength, conditioning and also MMA and boxing sessions. What's your favourite part of the training sessions we do? Um, well, I really like the flexibility around the training sessions. So, you know, obviously coming back from a nasty injury, like I mentioned before, there's time at the start of the session to come in and do the things that I need to, to prepare yeah. for it. Uh, but then also in the session, at the moment, I'm quite limited in some of the things that I can do. Uh, so there's always that flexibility to adapt the, the session. So it's not, I have to do what's on the board and that's it. You know, I can sort of talk with yourself and Troy who are running the sessions and you know, you guys can modify it to suit what I need. Um, that's what I'm, like I, I think is really important. For yeah. not just myself coming back from an injury, but from anybody who might be uh, like lacking a little bit of confidence within yeah. the gym. You know, I know a lot of the times people can come in and be, be quite intimidating when you see some really robust characters throwing some heavy weights around and you might feel like you have to keep that standard up. Of course, mate. Uh, yeah. But it's, it's a great environment that you can come into and you don't feel so intimidated like that. You nice, know, at your mate. own pace. and you're really guided by the trainers here. So, nice, a, so accountability is a, a really important part of what you're trying to do when, you, when you're trying to get on track and achieve your goals. Um, how, how have you found the accountability process here and how could people use accountability to improve their, uh, their success in achieving their goals? Yeah, one of, the, one of the things I really like here is if I miss a day or two of training, it could be for work or whatever it might be, I'll come through the doors and they'll ask me, you know, I didn't see you last night or I didn't see you the night before and things like that. And you know, you, that keeps you accountable. You know, you don't want to lie to them. You don't want to make anything up. So you sort of like, you know, um, and you, maybe you just didn't want to train that night or whatever it might be, but at least, you know, someone's asking. You yeah. know, if, if you're going to a gym by yourself and doing your own training sessions, there's no one there asking you those No accountability whatsoever. Um, and that's what I really love about the team environment. That's what I wanted, you know. I grew up playing footy and you know, I played it um, beyond school and all that sort of stuff. I've always been in team environments, I've coached in team environments um, and you can't get away with that stuff. Yeah. You, know, you can't just not rock up to a session and no one, you know, wonder where you are or why you're not there. So that's one of the really great concepts of Valley Chudo training is that, you know, it, there's a real accountability piece in and amongst the people who train, not just the trainers. Yeah. You touched on, um goals and, and your vision and different types of goals. Can you talk us through that a little bit, mate? Yeah, so what we've sort of determined at the Institute is there's two types of goal setting. So you've got your outcome goals and then you've got your value-based goals. Yeah. And you can represent that in a metaphor of two climbers coming up a mountain. And so obviously one is an outcome-focused uh, climber and the other one is value-based. And they get halfway up the mountain and a big storm rolls through. 
Now, both of them will camp out to try and see the storm through. The outcome goal person will continue to look at their watch and be like, no, I wanted to climb this mountain in three days. It's already been a day and a half. I'm not going to be able to do it. Yeah. And they will get frustrated because they're not achieving the steps that they wanted to, to adhere to. And they will scale back down the mountain and go find another goal to achieve. Yeah. The values-based person will see the storm through, right? And they will enjoy the experience. They will, um, you know, they'll learn from it. They'll learn about themselves. They'll learn about the conditions. And then what happens is the, uh, the storm will pass through and they'll continue up the mountain. They'll eventually get to the peak. Along the way, they'll learn more about themselves, more about their environment, so that the next time they're placed in a circumstance like that, they can easily overcome any hurdles or challenges nice. that come. The outcome-based person would head back down the mountain, shoot off to try and find another goal, but what they will do is every time a challenge comes their way, they'll try and avoid it. Right. And they will blame circumstances for them not achieving their goals. Wow. And they won't really learn much about themselves. They won't learn about the experience and the environment they're in. Um, and what they'll do is they'll just end up like frog hopping yeah, between yeah. all different goals um, and not really valuing or really learning anything about their own experiences. Nice, yeah, definitely. So Tom, how could, how could we apply that metaphor of results-based goal setting to our Unleash program over the 28 days? Um, so I think it's really important that people, and through the mindset pillar of Unleashed, that they understand the reasons and the motivations to why they're doing what they're doing. Um, it's, it's, it's all well and good to, you know, be able to lose 10 kilos in a month, well, five kilos in a month to fit that suit that you want because you've got a wedding coming up. Yeah. But unfortunately what happens is once that wedding has happened and you fit into the suit, what happens beyond that? Do you just nice. fall back into your old habits? Yeah. Um, and Which then, is what a lot of people do, don't they? Exactly. It's, it's a bit of a lifestyle trait of the Western culture where what we do is we sort of, we get into a rhythm of things and we just continue to, to push through. Um, you know, we, we burden ourselves with so much responsibility, whether that's work or family or whatever it is, and we run ourselves into the ground. And we don't sort of, we don't assess why we're doing things and the reasons behind them. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, like I said, you know, we'll do as much as we can. We crash, we go see the doctor, we get all of our antibiotics and all those sort of things. We feel good again and then we just get straight back into the same old thing. Yeah. You know, where we just we drive ourselves into the ground, get sick, and then it's just a rinse and repeat type process. Yeah. So it's, uh, which is not conducive to, you know, a, a really meaningful valued life yeah. um, so essentially what what you want to be doing is understanding the reasons why you know you want to achieve these health and fitness goals um, and then once you've done that you really start to look at how can I apply this in the long term yeah and, and having that 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 constant that Kaizen principle it's just constant improvement it's a, it's a long-term journey isn't it absolutely so one of the things we talk about um, at my work is around growth mindset yeah so it's always about learning from your experiences, trying nice. to make yourself a better person. One of the things that we talk about with our athletes is a, a thing called the Velcro effect. Um, so you can imagine all your core values is this little ball of fluffy Velcro that you carry with you. And as you go through life, you pick up all these different, you know, these ideas, these concepts, um, and you apply them in your life. So two years ago, I picked up Wim Hof. You know, yeah. that's one of my little bits of Velcro. Okay. And, I, and I think it's a really good thing for me personally. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe in 10 years time, you know, when I take a step back and I look at my Velcro, I'll find little bits where I'm like, I can't believe I'm still hanging on to this. You know, yeah, why yeah. am I still valuing this, you know, and, and get rid of it. And with that sort of mindset, you'll find that you're more open to things, um, yeah. you know, and you're sort of, when you're more open to things, you tend to sort of, you know, um, find more meaning and value in the things you want to chase. Couldn't agree more, mate. Well said, Tom. Tommy, you're working with really um, high-end athletes uh, who are under a lot of pressure and, and um, stress to perform at a really high level. What's, what's a couple of really simple tips you could give to our members and anyone in the general public that they could use to be really successful in their everyday life? Yeah, I think the most important thing and I'm really fortunate that I see both sides of the fence at my work. I can 
I help with the physical literacy side of things, but I also help with the mental mindset uh, with athletes, which is really important. Um, I think the most important thing that you need to do is you need to prioritise the things you value in life first. Um, so if health and fitness is in that top three category, uh, you need to then start to identify what values sit within that aspect of your life. Um, set some goals in and around what you want to achieve. Yeah. Um, and then identify your behaviours. So, and make yourself really aware of, um, you know, how you're responding and reacting to particular circumstances, which will help you drive um, through those values. So essentially what you're doing is, is uh, you know, you're prioritising health and your fitness. Um, you then uh, bring in your goals, so what you yeah. want to achieve, the values that will help you drive those goals, um, and then the and then the behaviours, so you can sort of modify those to make sure that you're always sticking to nice. your values. That's that's awesome, really, and really easy for people to apply to their everyday life too. Yeah, absolutely. There's there's a lot of different reasons why people get into health and fitness. Obviously, at the Institute of Sport, they're all there because they're competing at elite levels. Performance, yeah. Um, so it's a performance setting. But, you know, when you come here, it could be something as simple as, you know, I, I want to feel healthier and uh, feel fitter so I can run around with my kids. Yeah. And, you know, that's a really strong motivational goal. Um, and that ties in with family values um, self values, all those For sort sure. of things that will help you sort of, you know, continue to drive through and, and achieve those goals. The reality is, is that you will fluctuate between yep. your behaviours. So some days you'll have a really good day, some days you have a really bad day. Definitely, mate. Um, and it's about identifying those bad days and trying to move into that good space, yeah, into mate. the space where you feel like, no, you know, like I need to come here. I'm here for a purpose. I'm here for yep. a reason. Um, Oh, I couldn't agree more. So I think it's a really good point. And why wouldn't we all want to perform at our best and be at our best each, each day for our family, uh, performance at work and in everyday life? So that's awesome, Tom. Thanks, mate. It's really good.